Captain's Log, Episode 95. This episode of the Beer Avengers Podcast is sponsored by the Beer and Cheese Collective, located at 35-11 Dittmars Boulevard in Astoria, Queens. Enjoy their eclectic array of craft beer, artisanal cheeses, and specialty grocery items at the Beer and Cheese Collective. Home bar to yours truly, Captain Porter Brown Stout. Come with us to Fresno, the fifth largest city in California, for a reunification of the original Beer Avengers and Cider Girl for the first time since our European tour of 2022. We go on a whirlwind multi-day crawl through the Fresno area, but not so whirlwind that we could fit it all in one episode. So yeah, this is a uh, part one. Who knew? We certainly didn't. Remember to like, star, and subscribe whenever that feels appropriate. And send us your emails at thebeervengers at gmail.com if you have any questions, suggestions, or if you just like hearing us talk about you on the show. And now, without further ado, please enjoy episode 95, Beer Ventures Fresno Reunion. With a beer, 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 Ventures, beer, 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 Ventures, beer, 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 beer Ventures, with a beer, Ventures. Welcome to the BeerCast, everyone. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in Astoria, Queens, this is Captain Porter Brown Stout. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in the fifth largest city in California, this is the Pale Male Hophead Huck. And coming to you from an undisclosed location in the County of Kings, it is I, the Beer Wonder. And coming to you from an undisclosed location amongst the palm trees, it is I, Cider Girl. And we are the Avengers. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, that's, that one. That's that a, one didn't work. <laughs> well, not for you anyway. I think the rest of us did pretty well. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. people get the gist. With the beer I, I hope so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the beer went. The beer, beer went I, I may leave that in. I may not. I'm not sure. But uh, the beer I think went, you wonder, should. It was the terrible. Beer contribution to our elongated uh, intro this time was a coughing fit. Uh, <laughs> We're doing well, y'all. Happy 2024. I mean, we could pretend it's a laughing fit because I feel like it was a laughing fit that went into a coughing fit that became a laughing fit. So we're all having a good time, and that's what's most important. The snake uh, is eating its tail. We're fine. <laughs> uh, it's been a few weeks since you've heard from us, uh, and we'll be getting to the reason for that uh, very shortly. Mm. We talked about it in the last one, if you did, if you listen. If not, you know, download it. They're all available. But uh, you probably figure out a little bit. Some of you follow us know why, uh, why we're away, because we have a very special guest uh, today, and that is our returning beer venture, Cider Girl. Welcome, Cider Girl. Woo! Cider Girl! Representing uh, people who don't drink beer. That's right. Uh, but but is always game for all the brewery trips. That's uh, we that's are what an we call an ally. Yes, we are an accepting <laughs> beer vendor verse. We accept all kinds, even those who you know don't love the beers. Hey, we like yes. the ones who like who'll drive us around too. Exactly. Them. That is it's that is an great. important job in beer vendor. And we had a lot of that recently. But before we get into that, I. Uh, this might have been the quickest we've gotten into this ever because we 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 dilly dally around all the various things. But I mean, I know. it's this is a this is a wonderful late night uh, beer venture cast on the East Coast. It's ten thirty practically seven thirty, which is it, people who live in the, even the fifth largest city in California is kind of late for them too. Oh, yeah. uh, so so uh, so yeah. So I think it's time we get to the pores, right? The cows are lying Ooh. down out here. I know. Oh yeah. Once the sun goes <sighs> all over. Yeah, let's get to the pours. And of course, we have our very special guest, Cider Girl. Please uh, kick us off. But only Beer be one, polite. Beer Wonder is so proud. Beer Wonder is so proud. I am. Uh, You've learned in, in, in how, 90 how many episodes we finally learned. 95. This is 95. Think, see, there you go. Ooh. So I am going to break all the rules of the beer cast today. What? Oh, my goodness. I am going to be having a glass of wine. Wow! Ooh. This is this is an unprecedented moment on the beer cast. This is our first wine. We're all and about breaking I, boundaries. Yeah, I'm trying out a new character, um, and she's called. I like wine. You know what I like? I like wine. 
Uh, so, <laughs> I don't I know have... if we can fit that on a t-shirt, but that's, I like the idea. <laughs> I don't know if you so can what... that. Uh, it is a beautiful pour. It's got a, oh, it's a, that sounds beautiful. And it's got a, it's a dark, effect, yeah. it's a lovely dark red. Can you tell us the style or maybe a, like the, 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 the vintner, I guess is the correct word. <laughs> Winemaker. I don't know a lot about wine, but I know that I like uh, Italian wines. Okay, okay, so and, that's the start. Uh, yeah. This one is a Primitivo, uh, mm-hmm. which is a really nice. Uh, it's it's usually a fuller body. Bo- <laughs> it's a it's a good one. Uh, and this particular one. We need <laughs> names. We need names. Cider girl, wine girl, yes, whatever you yes. are. Um, it's a Torcicoda, uh, twenty nineteen Primitivo. Okay. Um, and it is bottled by, uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. It's it, from Italy. Uh, and it doesn't, uh, it says Salento. Don't know what that means. I hope it means good or perhaps <laughs> the area of Italy it comes from. I'm not a, uh, a wine expert, but we might talk about that in a little bit. Mm. Uh, this has a really beautiful deep red color. It's got some bubbles in it. I don't know if that's good. Uh, should I just give it a sip? You well, can. Could, uh, I, mean, I would, us, but but know. if we're gonna do this, we gotta we gotta get the bottle and the glass oh, next yeah. to each other. We gotta do this that's classic true, yeah. the wine real, avenger the style. Look. look at that. Mm. Oh my! It's a pretty swirly pattern on the mm. on the yeah, label. Hold it, hold the, it still for is... just a moment. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, the so label I love, is like... so beautiful. Um, and I used to pick wine out just by the labels. Uh, but now I do the labels and that they're from Italy. Ah, uh, so standards. Nice. Uh, to my beer vengers, my dear friends, to those of you listening out there, it smells good. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We, and listen, we get, you're, we you're, you're setting us up or? so well for the, uh, I, yeah, I, 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 well, hopefully yeah, it's she still like, has it's, some left. When we get for the group like, toast, hopefully she still has some left. There's politeness in this politeness. Yeah. Oh, I know. That, I know. Try it? Well, since, since, since this is all about California this week, it is. Uh, I it feel is. like Huck should go next. What do you think, Beer One? That would make sense. That uh, that again, right. the politeness, time yeah. before time. I don't know. Best right. coast, uh, West Coast before Best Coast. I don't know. Great. Well, Ooh. well, working in our our theme that uh, about our, our California trip, I got our very first beer from Summer Fox on the air. Ooh. This is the Bind Breaker. This is their uh, their it's flagship a- IPA. Check that. I love the Fox. Beer, Beer Wonder had one. I did. It was so good. Oh, my gosh. It's actually the closest brewery to our house, Summer mm-hmm. Fox. And ironically, we did not go there. We went to the one at Clovis. Everybody, everybody yeah, we did go to the one at Clovis. Yeah, no, that was the first beer I had in our misadventures. It's a good beer. Look at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's got that style. Nice and clear, you know, good head retention on that one. So a decent amount of protein in that thing. Kind of a darker color. Ugh, ace. Ace. Very nice. Yeah, mm. let's see that. I, and I actually never saw the can. I love the cool fox. I mean, yeah. I don't know. He, he's sly. Let's be specific. He is sly. But he could also be cool. You know, it's well, funny. I saw, I, thought, fox, so I saw a fox last night. night. That's true. When oh, I was yeah? walking, walking to the bus, yeah. We have a neighborhood fox. Yeah. One should. Right, That's neither here nor there. Uh, who else uh, wants to have a, a beer? <laughs> oh, uh, it's nice he called me the neighborhood fox. Mm. Uh, what, what do you What do you think, Beer Wonder? Me or you? Well, here's the thing: if we're continuing the California theme, um, I have I'm not continuing the California theme with our beverage, so I think well, you right. should go next. So, all right, I'm going to continue the California theme with a beer from Montana. <laughs> Ooh, that 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 does not continue the California theme. It does, you conti- but you continue the does, America theme. It does continue the California theme, and that story will come out after okay. we all have a full glass, and we don't have to overexplain this stuff anymore. Okay. Uh, this is from Big Sky Brewing Company. Mm. Uh, it is a 2023 Ivan the Terrible, aged in American oak bourbon. Barrels. Oh my gosh! It's a uh, rated very highly on all the it's like rated in the 90s and all on like on beer and also i should say this is a this is a, i think it's a i can't see the number here but i'm guessing this is like about 19.2 ounces and it's yeah. a 13.9 percent beer mm-hmm. so uh big something oh there we go doesn't say which bourbon barrels it is but there we go let's end holy moly 
Entering the darkness here. I know. This is classic. This is classic. It's like gasoline. There we are. It, yeah, nice, well, subtle, nice subtle head there, but... Smoky there creme go. brulee head. Subtle. There it is. Nice. All monkey. right. Beer Wonder, you've been very patient. What do you have? I have. Well, I don't know. This is going to get this is embarrassing because I feel like I do this every week. But this week, I will be drinking a... Concert pour. A sponsored pour from the Beer and Cheese Collective. Well, we, you know, we're spending a lot of time in California. We have to remember our sponsors. So I'm really. We do have to remember our sponsor. Point. And while, yeah. while y'all were doing like California and Montana, I decided just to go to Sweden. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, Sweden. why not? To Sweden, yeah. The beer is from uh, Omnipolo in collaboration with Track Brewing, distributed by our friends at 12% in New Haven. So we've really just run the whole gamut here. And it is called Gold! Exclamation yeah. point. Exclamation point. Right, you gotta yeah. get you gotta get that one. You gotta get the exclamation point matters, okay? Um, and what we are looking at is a triple IPA, clocking at just a casual ten percent. Wow. Just, just casual. Because I figured if we're gonna go big, we might as well do it at home. So we're gonna crack this open. Nice crack. Crack the track. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see what a triple IPA from Sweden looks for. Now, apparently they have a uh, church like brewery. So this is also blessed beer. Let's be clear. Sacred, if you will. We may have had an Omnipolo on the show before. We have, I feel like yes. I had one or two. Yeah. I, uh, yes. I, I, gold I, I, in I, color I, there. I know. It is solid. It is truly solid gold. Like, gold. check that out. That is absolutely yep. beautiful. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Yep. And okay. citrus on the nose. Can't wait. All right, we all have all right. our fours. Now we're ready. Let's do it. Cheers, Beer Avengers. Cheers. Cheers. By the way, mine's a 15 and a half percent. Oh, my goodness. Cider Girl wins. I mean, it's all. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's not a contest. Ugh. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Yeah, I like this bind breaker. It really has that old school vibe, not too syrupy as sometimes the West Coast can be. Got mm-hmm. a real nice smooth finish. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's smooth and bitter on the finish. Yeah, it's really nice. Summer Fox, they are one of my favorites in town. Yeah, uh, I'm glad we finally uh, got him a shout out on the show. No, I remember this one being very piney in like the best way. It's mm-hmm. really just a lovely like representation of a West Coast IPA. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 Summer Fox is such a fun place to go to, both locations, uh, even for Cider Girl. Excellent. <laughs> we found you some cider there, if I recall correctly. I'm <laughs> sure we'll get into that. But um, we well, will. this this gold is solid gold. Um, apparently, um, they bonded with Track Brewing, which was their collaborator, and they did a collaborative IPA. They have got some Hop Revolution Nelson and the experimental Yakima HBC 586 in there. Uh, and they refer to it as a hoppy meeting of the minds. And it definitely is. It is very citrusy. It is wildly smooth. Good amount of bitterness. I'm really getting something in the back of my mouth that kind of shows up at the very end. Um, but just a lovely and unfortunately dangerously sweet beer. Mm. Um, so you don't really notice that it's going to creep up on you real quick. Yeah. the uh, And I believe Track Brewing is out of Manchester. It is out of Manchester. Manchester so it's, very, it's a very international beer we've got going on here. Across the Atlantic Sea? That's what I hear. Are you a In genius? genius? Across the, what do they call the sea uh, between uh, Sweden the ch- and uh, the, the Channel? Narrow sea. England. No, I'm thinking of Game of Thrones. Uh, the northern part of North, the, the North sea? sea. There you go. I, mean, I don't think that's quite right, but we can check I'll that. Check my geography. Uh, I got the hops on this summer fox. Amarillo, mm-hmm. Chinook. Mm-hmm centennial and columbus now these are like that makes sense yeah those are like the four of the west coast standards so it makes Mm -hmm. a lot of sense yeah the west coastiest of the west coasts for sure coastiest of the west coast yeah yeah speaking of west coast how's this montana situation so it's uh it's nice it's uh it's definitely like a classic russian imperial stout and i can taste the barrel but it's kind of subtle uh, it's oh, still, nice. I mean, it's still very much a sipping beer. Uh, I was just looking up on our spreadsheet and I, I thought I had this right. And presuming my record keeping is accurate, which is not always a given. Uh, this is not the first Montana beer we've had on the show, but it may only be okay. the second. 
All right. Uh, I remember. Uh, so want to back up a little bit, because if, if you didn't listen to the last episode, what you may not know is that all of us that are here on the show right now together just had a wonderful Beer Avengers West Coast reunion in California. Uh, Beer did. Wonder and I flew to Fresno and had a wonderful time with Hop Hawk and Cider Girl over over a, 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 a short but very activity-packed uh, several days. Um and, and, and so that's what we'll we'll be talking about that at various points during all of this. And we're here to just recap this wonderful trip. Uh, if you want, we were hoping that I was going to talk about the Barrel H Festival at Gun Hill. I'm still got that in the back burner. We're going to bring that up soon. But today we're going to be completely focusing on this wonderful California trip we all had together. Oh, fuck yeah, my dude. It was a good time. Oh, right? yeah. No, it was some good I time. I was really anticipating it for like a week at least thinking yeah, about exactly what we were going to do and how each day was going to go. And like, even the first day when I picked up uh, beer wonder from the airport, it's about noon. I was like, we're mm-hmm. going to go to, we're going to go to Sam's deli. We're going to get the oh, Wolfalettas, yeah. and then we're going to come back. We're going to have naps <laughs> and then we're going oh, yeah. to, we... we're going to go out to Clovis <laughs> and we did all that. It was a highly successful day. All right, so, yeah, so that's this is this is well, before but, I was involved. I was still I, here preparing to fly in. So uh, yeah, you you were you were supposed to crash at my place uh, Wednesday night, but you weren't able that to. Was, but, we had a crisis situation, but it all worked out. It was okay. But yeah, um, you you you. How early did you have to leave Brooklyn to get to the airport for that six a.m. flight? So I I'm just gonna say I committed. Okay, yeah. when, I, when when one goes to visit Hophead Huck and Cider Girl, one does not, this is not a halfway situation. Okay, so my flight was at five forty six a.m. out of that airport in the county of Queens. Um, JFK, not the ca- no, the other one. Oh, LaGuardia, you were flying to LaGuardia yes, also. Okay. I was flying. Well, yes. right. that, was, that was why you were going to crash at my place. That's why I was going to crash with you, yeah. but then everything fell apart, and and I wasn't yeah. able to get out in as much time as I would have liked to. So I get to to this airport. I was up at three thirty in the morning. Got there, flew into uh, Dallas, Texas, raced across the airport in Dallas, Texas. Got on a little baby plane and got it into the eleven red ruby. Is that what the 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 chariot is called? The car, oh. yeah, Ruby, yeah, yes, yeah, just Ruby. Ruby, yeah, just Ruby, um, uh, of of Hophead Huck before one p.m. local yeah. time, Fresno time. Yeah, um, did, did did you manage to nap on the plane at all? Oh, uh, full on pass out, hundred percent, both flights. I'm very um, impressed. With that. I, I I'm I'm bad at that apparently. Uh, but yeah, I am too. To. Usually, if it's early morning though, that's a good, that's an easier time to mm-hmm. do it. If you end up getting on the plane yep. at six o'clock and you've been up since three, that's kind of it tends to be a little it's helpful. Easier, yep. I, I had even had a cup yeah. of coffee in the in the airport and I still fully passed out. Um, but I was glad I had a, a, I, I was energized to see Huck. And it had been, well, I should mention, we should mention the last time that the four of us were together, uh, we were in Germany. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We did two yeah, episodes we'll, about that. If you want to look back on those, uh, I'll figure out the numbers before what we're So doing. it was very exciting to get to see uh, Huck at the airport. And we went and had delicious muffalettas and a mushroom salad, lest oh, we forget, yeah. uh, over at Sam's, which is the Italian deli that's uh, in Fresno. That I was, it was spectacular. It was really excellent. Um, and I guess this is a place that you and Cider Girl frequent. Yeah, whenever well, we pick a someone up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I like to take staff members there too from work. Um, yeah. What I would say is it's the closest thing to a New York, like really great sandwich deli shop, um, but with the friendly service of right. California. Yes, I, I will say, I did mention to Huck that I get up there ready to go, like with my order, New York style, right? Hi, right. can I have a blank? And I say, hi. And the person behind the counter says, oh, hi, how are you? And I was like, oh, right. I actually have to talk to you like a person. <laughs> <laughs> so we had That's, a full on it, full on interaction. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's like a place on Arthur Avenue, but uh, it's just friendlier people. And yeah, yeah. I, and it, it feels like New York when you go in there, it looks just like a, uh, a real like Bronx, um, classic italian deli oh yeah anyway we got our naps in and then we we hit the streets uh when wait a minute no, no, be, no beers at sam's no no, no we took no beers at Sa- we were saving up because because we right. knew we had we had the captain to catch the night before and while this was what we dubbed our shore leave adventure right. right because the captain was not there 
we decided not to go out in uniform, you know, because we had to we had to to, to prep everything. Uh, and the first what place we went to was Summer Fox, and it was uh, you know, and and I actually had the beer that Mikey has had on the show. No, excuse me, I don't know who he is. Uh, Hockey has had on the show, uh, but Hockey had the hey, Mikey, I get those two Hockey. confused all the time. I, I know, yeah, Mikey Hockey, who even knows? Um, but I had the Bindbreaker IPA. I felt like a West Coast IPA was the way to start things for the for the um, for the wonder over here. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I had the I had a, a Doppelbach over there that I thought yep. was just killer. Really mm-hmm. good. They make good and, lagers there. And I think we were able to find Cider Girl a beverage there too, if I'm not mistaken. I was also there. Yes. You were. Yes. Now, <laughs> Cider Girl was playing the important role of driver. <laughs> I did have a little bit adventure. of Cider, um, yep. but you know, I was more being the designated driver. Exactly. Uh, and I loved Summer Fox. I just thought it was such a cool, chill space. Um, and there, they had that little stage mm-hmm. that I thought was really cool, um, which wasn't the first stage we saw that night. Uh, because our next stop was apparently, as we learned, the hot new spot in Clovis. And I do need to mention. Wait, wait, wait. wait. When, you said, when you said it wasn't the first stage, do you mean it wasn't the last stage? <laughs> That's true. It wasn't the last stage. That's correct. This 10 percenter is hitting me already. Uh, I, I do have to backtrack, though. Um, the, the traffic in Fresno. Oh, getting oh my. To we forgot, I forgot about that. We yeah, were we in to traffic, man. We were in traffic for 20 minutes and I was appalled. That was so embarrassing. It was the worst. I was like, uh, this no, never happens. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. go ahead. Uh, There's a girl. little Fresno joke uh, when people are in Fresno and they have to go to Clovis. And just so everyone knows, it's just the next town over. Uh, but if you if you have to go to Clovis, people go, oh, oh, that's going to take such a long time. And so we have this joke that, like, do you have to pack a bag? Should you get a, a maybe your pajamas ready? Because it's mm-hmm. such a long trip to Clovis. Meanwhile, a nice that little would go be... bag, uh, go bag, you know, with uh, with some water and some protein, yes, and yeah, maybe yeah. right. Where mm-hmm. in New York, you know, you could go from my old house to Midtown in the same amount of time on the subway. Exactly. So. Yeah. 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 Well, it's yeah, funny I mean, that I had forgotten about the traffic. That's how good a time we had out in Clovis. Well, yeah, I mean, the traffic really killed the buzz. I'm just going to throw <laughs> that out there. I was appalled. Um, but at least, at least we made it to what does appear to be the hot new spot yep. in Clovis. Um, do you want to do you want to tell tell them about the, this? The, the Backyard Social Club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really cool spot. And it was the open mic night for music. And uh, we have a little band, the Mickey Bricky Band. So we got up and did a couple of our songs. Uh, so it was a it was a fun fun time over there. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we it. drank some beer and some cider. Had some food. They have great food there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the cutest stage, and there's a, a split level audience. So people on the ground level are watching, and then you go up this staircase, and people are watching from above. So it's almost like having a balcony. It's really a neat space to perform in and to drink in and to eat in uh, and always great, great folks. List. Yeah. And the, the guy who was uh, sort of running the open mic seemed like a really cool dude. What was his name? Uh, Carlos Montana, yep. the Carlos Montana mm-hmm. band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, he was really cool. And so um, to Carlos. Yeah. Well, and I had a mildly monumental beer experience there um, because for the first time in my beer venging, I experienced Russian River. Yeah, oh, that's right. It was a big deal. Yep, I had the Russian River Happy Hops, which makes perfect sense, uh, and it was delicious. It was everything I had hoped it would be. And I also had the Burning Sun Juicy IPA, which I believe my notes indicate was orange juice. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had a Death and Taxes can, which is mm-hmm. uh, pretty normal for me, and then yeah. uh, I had something on draft. But I did oh, not boy. did not take yeah. a note of it. But See, the vibe of the, the captain sp- being there, our memories are foggy. Exactly. The shore it leave was shore was, leave. It was shore leave. So we didn't have to take things too seriously. But I will say that place was so cool. I loved the like carved out back bar that they had. Um the like it was kind of like being in your grandmother's like old house going back but also with like weird mounted heads of animals that work crazy and uh shuffleboard this is starting to sound a little like that place we went to in bruges 
Yeah, it, it's got that feel. It wasn't quite as creepy as yeah. the place in Bruges. But yeah. I also loved they, they have a legit backyard with like fire pits yeah. that you could go and hang out at. Um, it looked really cool. Yeah, so I like don't it there. want to totally take us out of linear time with the storytelling. Yeah. But what I loved the most was twice mm-hmm. someone said to Beer Wonder, yeah. oh, have you been to the backyard social? Club yes. Yet? And, <laughs> and on, by day two, he could say, why, yes, I have. It was very cool. Yes, I did say that multiple times, and I felt like a true, like, I felt like the top of the top Fresno echelon already, despite having been there for basically 72 hours in the entire existence. But it was, it, that was a really fun night. I love that place. I'm excited to see how it grows. And I guess you guys maybe had even had a sneak peek at it before? Yeah, before they opened, yeah, we got went to walk around, yeah, the space. So that's, I mean, we, that was really the only stops we made because it was shore leave and we had to have other dates and we were expecting the captain to come in next mm-hmm. night. Yeah, the next next day I was, uh, I, 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 I wasn't quite as, com- well, I, I don't feel like I was less committed than Beer Wonder. I was taking a later flight, but I was also staying longer. So I think it all mm-hmm. balances out. Uh, but I was supposed to, to take a noon flight on Friday, but presumably uh, because of the snowstorm, I, there was a, it wasn't even really a snowstorm. There was some snow. Friday morning, which seemed to be enough to get, have him cancel my flight and reschedule me for a flight four hours later. So I also took the similar trip through Dallas, but I didn't make it there until about 1130 uh, at night. Uh, and so thank you for I know you you did some more beer venging that night. Uh, the only beer venging I did was in the Dallas airport. Uh, <laughs> and I did have a couple of interesting uh, beers there. Uh, one was uh from a place, and this is a local one to to Texas. Uh, it's called the Community Beer Company, or I think so. All I see on this is Community Beer. Uh, a, a, but I had a Mosaic IPA there, and then I also had a uh, California beer because that was the only other local beer they had there. I was also having some local Texas barbecue, uh, and that was a Mango Cart from Golden Road. It was a wheat beer, uh, mm. and it came with the Tahin uh, mm-hmm. Rim. Important. The bartender called it tahin. I think if it's spelled with a G, it's is pronounced tajin. But if it's with a J, it's tahin. It's basically the same thing. Uh, please send us letters if you know there is any difference, any, any really discernible difference between the tahin and a tajin. And so that's what I was doing while you guys were having your second night of official or first night of official beer venging since the first night was surely, but this time you went out with the uniforms. And yeah, we had me- our uniforms, and it was called the mission, right? Uh, it was the mission. Yes, we, we thought we were the mission. completing the mission. We had to, we had, we were had to had to do what we had planned with the captain, but you know, captain had had abandoned his forces out in the field. So and we did, uh, we did get a replacement. I mean, no one can replace the captain, but a, a stand-in, as it were. Yes, uh, yes. And uh, the Hop Goblin joined. Yes, us, uh, yes. Our, our first named supervillain. Yes, apparently yes. Uh, uh, the, the Hop Goblin. Uh, <laughs> we actually named that person on the last episode, but now that they're a Beer Avenger officially, I guess we can't say their name again. No, no. can't say their name anymore. Even yeah. if their initials are something between that, the, they might you might mistake them for the word Junior. There you go. Yeah, there but but, well, but they're did, the, we, they're a villain. We can't name a villain. Come we on, did, y'all. We did. Uh, well, we could have called him Jr. That would have been like a villain, you know, like Dallas. Mm. That's a that's a callback. That's a that's an old reference. I'm not <laughs> even sure I get that, that one. Yeah, no, no, hard pass. Hopefully, um, we won't have that issue here. In- yeah, Disney. well, our first so so we we went to uh, Cider Girls Clark Kent experience and had a wonderful opportunity getting to to see some of the cool things that were happening over there. Um, we had delicious burgers uh, where we met a fine gentleman who uh, greeted us while holding a chainsaw. And that is a whole other situation. Casually walking uh, down the street with a chainsaw. Because ca- this is this was the introduction to Fresno that we had. Um, you know, casual There's chainsaw. There's of gardening going on in Fresno of all sorts of different <laughs> yeah. types, I think. It didn't have any kind of work clothes on. or uh, Hashtag Fresno. Yeah. <laughs> but he was he very was a, polite. He greeted he was us. A, he with wanted to make sure we were having a good day while he was carrying that um, that thing. Um, I, say, I think did he say top of the morning? It felt like it. <laughs> he said top of the morning to you. It was wildly. It, it was, was delightful. Afternoon. Yeah. 
Um, but but after we did that important work, uh, there were naps because your Avengers must be ready. Uh, yes. And and then we st- we really took the town and we we started at a place that I think was actually a first visit even for both of you, uh, which was Procreation Brewing, right? Yeah, I had never been there. Oh, we went to Procreation. <laughs> We did, yes. Now, yeah. the the fact that Hop and Huck is forgetting this is maybe indicative of the experience we had. Oh man, what a weekend! Wasn't the yeah? Best we went to Procreation's had. beer. I don't remember what I had. IPA, I think. Yep, I oh, had the best. I had, I, oh, I had the cherry porter. Yes, you did the cherry, cherry porter. porter, and it was fine. It was fine. It was fine, <laughs> and really nice tap room. A beautiful, yeah. but it's it's literally surrounded by darkness. Uh, in that part of town (laughs) there's the brewery district which is well lit and then it's about two blocks off the brewery district and it's procreations it's it's just every other business around it is completely closed shuttered yeah (laughs) yeah not very fresno very fresno and as we pulled up we're like some person's parking like in uh, front of a fire hydrant in front of a hydrant crooked back in their car in and out like what are they doing almost uh, drove up onto the curb and it was the bartender was the bartender so we did have our one beer at procreations and then we went on to uh one of our favorite spots in fresno yes. which is south of shaw brewing fantastic place. uh not only they have great, cool. great beer but they have great pizza and unfortunately our pizza did take a while to come out they were very busy now i i do want to call out that it was a very busy night that is true but i do have to mention that cider girl did prove the, perform some true beer venger magic <laughs> in our ability to get ourselves a spot at the bar yes it was hard to get uh, a seat yeah i knocked over like three or four old people you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were you, sitting you gotta do what you gotta do we yeah. were sitting outside and outside was okay I mean, it wasn't cold, yeah. very cold night but indoors would have been better and then so we kept seeing people move and finally, Cider Girl saw people exit the bar. We had four seats right at the bar. So that ended up being really good. And I was uh, very impressed oh, by did that. You, Cider Girl, did you just, you just, you just sort of like gently nudge them aside or how did that work? So I leapt out of my picnic table seat, mm-hmm. ran, uh, sprinted uh, through the front door, threw the front door open, threw myself onto a seat. Somebody came up with drinks and looked at me and I said, I'm sorry, we've been waiting a really long time. And I spread out over the four chairs. <laughs> no kidding. It was, it was that's spectacular. Some, that's, some, that's some Jedi mind trick shit right there. Some yeah, New York absolutely. Shit. Yeah, no, it was, it was, and, and the thing is, what I loved and what I appreciated is that, that was 100% New York, but there was such a Fresno smile in it that no one could even attempt anything. And it was truly epic. Um, and I thought the food and beer was out of this world. I mean, I had the California Common, felt like a good thing to have in California. It was fine, but that pizza was, was wonderful. I remember I had the Japanese rice lager, which was very mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes those rice lagers can seem a little thin or not flavorful. Mm-hmm. This one was just very refreshing, and it was an excellent summer beer, uh, even though we had it in winter. But you know, I don't, I don't uh, call out the season. Although and I good. had a um, berry cider. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, that was a more tart berry, uh, and it was really delicious. It had a sweetness to it, but not uh, the the tartness of the berry kept it from being overly sweet Mm -hmm. which is a problem with a lot of the ciders in fresno they're super sweet Mm -hmm. so it was great to have one that had some balance to it it was delicious right yeah so we we got our we got our pies and we got our and we met uh, our super villain there briefly villain and uh the four of us then headed up to uh one of my favorite spots where Mm -hmm. we took the captain on tuesday uh, the, uh, uh, spoke easy spoke. Oh yeah. Spoke was very nice. Uh, that and... place has such a cool vibe. It's this yeah. like, it's kind of, it, it like feels like it's in this like strip area. It's right next to kind of like an indie theater feel and you walk in and it's like kind of bike shop. It felt there was like a backyard where they were serving food. Um, and you know, like, ju- and, and they have all these bottles up on the top of the walls that have been like sort of sitting there for a while. So you get this like, you're in a place where beer is being done correctly when you walk in that place. It was just really kind of divey, but like respectful of beer. Just super cool. Just really awesome. 
And we had the Hop Goblin with us, and we were also were joined by yes, Rye Guy, Rye Guy, and and Sarazon. Yes, yep. our other Beer Avenger friends here. In, Who I met uh, the next night. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And yeah. I was waiting for them to come so I could open up this bottle of Libertine. Yes. Ale. Libertine is out of, uh, uh, and it's, it was called Wine Mom. Wine Mom. Uh, Oof. Oh, Oof. boy. This is a nice, uh, nice beer, uh, yes. Captain. It's a yes. wild ale with mandarins, pears, pomegranates, uh, Zinfandel, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Syrah grapes. So very much a wine vibe, but it's called Wine Mom. Um, but uh, excellent um, uh, sour ale, right? Um, really good. And I think about, I'm looking for the ABV on this. I think it was, it's up there. Oh, you know what you let, you know, Huck, Huck, you left out uh, a few other descriptions that I would have put in, like soy sauce and yeah. hard to drink. Yep. Oh, I did oh. not like this beer. It so you're saying good. there was a strong there was a strong umami element to this beer. It no. tasted like socks. <laughs> no, it was delicious. It was split down the middle. We tried it for six people tried it and three people loved it and three people couldn't drink it. That is true. It was a very oh, divisive yeah. beer and wow. I was not team I was not team wine mom. I am not a good wine mom. I'll be really honest. Well, our bartender, uh, Jacob, also known as, uh, he's got a, a rap name, so we uh, have a beer avenger name. Uh, but he's one of the, actually one of the co-owners of the place, and he he thought he thought it was great. So yeah, I go by his opinion and my own, of course. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are all valid opinions. J- just so we don't have to double back too much to the whole spokeasy thing, we, I can talk a little bit about my experience that when we were there several days later. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, talk about it. Yeah, because I uh, first of all there was a, a, a pupusa truck there, which was great. Yep. And my oh yeah, pupusa. Cool. Uh, and and, and uh, cider girl went out and got those for us while we were sort of we there was some bottle sharing going on. Brought had some beers from Queens there. We were sharing with the crowd. Uh, the main beer I had there that was on tap was from uh, from Untitled Art and uh, Angry Chair. Ooh. Uh, mm, strangely right. enough, Untitled Art is in Wisconsin. Angry Chair is in Florida. They collaborate a lot. I've gotten some stuff from them uh, in some of my Tabor boxes before, but this one was called their it was their barrel aged coconut s'mores, and it was good. But like a lot of the stuff I get from them, it was maybe a little sweeter than I liked. But it was it was nice. Uh, but that I, I mentioned that because I I teased this before. I have to talk about it now. Spoke Easy is where I got the Ivan the Terrible. Oh, there you go. Uh, That's right. Because, because uh, you know, uh, and this to me is is a lot of, like, Huck, you've been talking about Spoke Easy on the show for almost since you got there. Uh, and uh, yeah. and you always talk about how when you go to Spoke Easy, that even though there's so much great California beer, you wind up getting something else. Yeah, because they have such yeah. a great selection. You're like, oh, wow, there's a Grim beer here. I'm going to get this one. Uh, and, and, and I, I was, I wasn't necessarily going to, but this one caught my eyes. Like, wait a minute. What is that? What is that? What is that Russian Imperial stout? <laughs> I think that's coming home with me. Uh, right so yeah, on. so that's where I got this one. Uh, pretty reasonable too. I mean, it's a big can, a uh, high ABV, $14 can. Uh, and I was like, when I was looking up information about this earlier, uh, that's pretty much standard, uh, with, with how this is sold pretty much anywhere. So, uh, it was a very... Forty dollars may sound like a lot for a beer, but it's a big beer, uh, and it's a strong beer, and it's a. I'm I'm, I'm absolutely glad this is the one beer I brought with me back from California. It's the only beer I brought with me from California it was a Montana beer. Uh, Seems appropriate. What, what I love about Spokeasy, if I may, mm-hmm. um, it it's like the best of Fresno and the best of like New York City East Village. Mm-hmm. It's got um, you know a great can and bottle selection. It has. Uh, not a lot of taps, but each tap is so carefully uh, selected. Even yeah. the ciders are always really interesting there. It's yeah. got on weekends, the back bar, they, they have DJs in the way back. You know, people can bring their own bottles and share them amongst friends. Uh, they do that a lot. Uh, it, it attracts actual brewers who come and bring what they're working on and they share them together. And then there's always different food, always different food vendors every day. So it's just it's just a fantastic place to go. Yeah, bottle shares are a big deal there. And they, I always ask, like, when are the bottle shares going to be? And no one ever knows. It's always like it could be uh, 
Tuesday. It could be my, and they, they just suddenly happen. The bottle shares. So spoke easy gets high marks with us. It's just a real magical spot where you, I feel like anything can happen with great. I had, I had a great time there. Yeah. yeah. We did a great bottle share on Tuesday and, uh, and everybody was pretty uh, enthusiastic about it and accepting of it. It was fun. And then of yeah, course, so I was I was glad. Uh, I know they already have some New York City stuff there, but I was glad that you brought some of the uh, some of the Queens, some of the single cut beers that I brought to you, and you shared them with people at the bar. That was really cool. Yeah, we had the heavy boots of lead. Uh, oh, good one. Which was just great. It was one of my. Did favorites. you take the St. Huppins there as well? I can't remember. We did not. Okay, just but heavy boots of lead. Well, I think we did have it later in the yeah. evening. <laughs> yes, that's as true. one should. And we have photographic evidence that we drank it later. It's a, by the way, it goes to eleven. It's eleven percent. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, triple IPA, and uh, and we watched something on the TV, but I don't know what we we watched. I, yes, we can. Ooh, that's a good question. All right, yeah. you know what? We'll get to that, but let's go back to Friday night because I guess it was after Spoke Easy. <laughs> there was one more camp. stop. Well, there that's was one more picked. stop. Oh, there was one because more. Because okay. we, we did go to Goldstein's, which yeah. was wild. Oh, yeah. Um, and, busy. Uh, it busy. and yeah, it was a busy night. And I this was another monumental wonder moment because I had my yep. very first Pliny the Elder there. Yeah, we both got Ooh. Pliny's. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it, and, and my notes say exactly what I always wanted. So <laughs> now, granted, I was, let me count one, two, uh, are we counting Wine Mom as a beer? Because I don't know if that was, uh, but mean, one, two, three, four, they would call it three and a half. This was my fourth and a half beer. Um, okay. so I was feeling, and also, you know, time change, all that stuff. I was feeling every moment of my life and trying to keep it together for the captain because we couldn't embarrass ourselves at the Fresno airport. <laughs> um but that but we that did anyway we, we did yeah <laughs> but but that Pliny the elder beer really hit a spot for me and it was kind of monumental and I, like it was such a cool place to get a chance to enjoy that beer so yeah, yeah. and we enjoyed golds on tuesday as well mm -hmm. we did uh but yeah you finally found me at the airport i finally got there almost midnight went back to went back to your to the casa the casa Bertuccino, uh right. in fresno and you you, you even though you clearly had well, it wasn't clear to me, but clear to both of you that you'd done plenty of beer venging that night, but well, you still brought out a few balls. Hard. Nice things to share. Yeah. And we did enjoy a nice Firestone bottle that I've been saving for yep. a while. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Kentucky Mule mm -hmm. vintage a bourbon barrel aged blended ale with ginger and lime peel. I'll get and behind the mule. Very good. 2021. Yeah. And in uh, case anybody... Uh, turns this over to the police later i just want to say that i had stopped drinking earlier in the evening yes uh, so i was the designated driver and uh, all the beers we're talking weren't... yes and all the beers we're talking about at this moment were ones after we got back to the house <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and cider cider girl really did does win the award for mvp on a lot of uh a the lot hero. of this weekend but I'll be honest, the next day is when yeah. Spider Girl really earned her stripes. And, and I think we're going to skip past brunch since there's no beer stuff and this is a beer podcast. Well, so I, have to I, I, I do have to casually mention that Cider Girl and I went on an early morning adventure to get some snacks and uh, arrived at a place called Judy's Donuts, where we oh. were informed that if you eat a donut every day, you will lose weight. And yeah. I am going to stick by that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's what the oh, donut oh, lady oh. told us. I'm just going to uh, do a quick, do, quick donut. Pour. This is uh, called Sabatino. Ooh. It's from uh, Around the Horn Brewery. Oh, 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 we're at second pour. All right. Sabatino. Uh, it's an uh, Italian style Pilsner. Got and look. it looks like one. And oh. Insider Girl is refilling. Insider Girl's on a second port. I mean, I'm I, I'm still working on mine, but yeah. Hold, it's hold also called that. the Crispy Kid, the Crispy Kid uh, Sabatino. It's around the Horn Brewing, which is out of Groveland, California, which I believe Groveland, is Southern California. Excellent. Wow, this is uh, this is insane. Because we're only to Saturday at this point, and we're on I a know. second four. There uh, was a lot of work that happened, there but was, but there was. but thank That's goodness nice. we. But we, we, we brunched at a place with trains. We had donuts, which apparently will help us lose weight. And then Cider Girl showed up 
in the way that she always shows up because it was time to take tonight's theme of your beverage and take it to a 10. You want to tell us about it? Yeah, so I was lucky enough to win, if you can call an auction. Wait a minute, are we, win, are we skipping but... past the Barrel House? Barrel House was first. I was We did there. go to Barrel House. We did go to Barrel House first, yes. I, that was the first beer of that day. I, That's I, true. I, yeah, I, want, I, 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 th- I, I absolutely agree with you, Beer One. We have to give Cider Girl her props, but our first beer that day was at Barrel House. That I, is I true. I don't remember yes. everything that I had. I... Uh, I, uh, I'm all, um, all I will say from that experience was delightful, excellent service, wonderful. Yes. Please do not put candy canes in beer. Yes, I that, think we that, all agree on that. And that is the I believe, only non delightful part of the whole thing, yes. And I believe Cider Girl, uh, and I, uh, Cider Girl experienced a root beer seltzer that was excellent yes, there, and the Dr. Pepper good. seltzer was nice too. Yeah, uh, one or two. I go, I got a flight of stouts, one or two of them were pretty good. Uh, it may not be the thing they do best, but I like their oatmeal stout a lot. So and it was, was a cool space. This was to now. become what we were calling the mall crawl. Yes, the mall crawl. Yes. Because we All had right. in the mall at Total Wine, we were doing. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. So, oh, it's, it so that's where we went. That was your now, cue. No, I, I, just, I just didn't want to skip past the beer because that was the first like beer place I went to with you guys. That's fair. Yeah. I wanted yes. to mention it, but absolutely, let's mention <laughs> the Total Wine thing uh, yes. on top of that. I, I Yeah. So the gentleman began across the street in a strip mall uh, at a place and then walked across the street to another strip mall because that's very California-y uh, to a Total Wine uh, where we had a two-hour wine experience that I had Is won. Is it only two at... hours? <laughs> I had won at an auction uh, and uh, I was allowed to invite a bunch of people. So it was uh, the Beer Vengers plus uh, many of our friends as well. Uh, about 14 of us, and we got to try five different Italian wines. Uh, we had a uh, sort of MC who talked us through all the wines and taught us how to smell wine and look at wine and drink wine and taste wine. Uh, and he did a bang up job. And then about halfway through it, I realized he was doing all of this for a pretty big group of educator, entertainers, and interpreters. <laughs> so he probably yes. had the worst audience he could have possibly had, the hardest critics, and we were delightful. Yeah, uh, yes, and I hope were. he had a good time with us. I mean, he, we have five S's, he had four. It's still all right, yeah. <laughs> and, and I will say, I have used the knowledge I gained that day in my awesome. continued efforts to make all the alcohol become mine. Possibly so, even yes. earlier this evening? We don't have yep. to talk about that. All right. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> um, so I was so glad that um, you guys were here to take uh, to do that with me. Uh, my dream was when I won it that you guys would be here. So that was awesome. And I do want to mention that there was a salami rose off among yeah. Hop Head Huck, the captain, and myself. And mine was and, the least popular. <laughs> and if we're going by the one that got eaten first, it was mine. And if we're going by the one that lasted the longest, it was Captain's. And that sounded yeah. even worse than I thought it would before <laughs> I said it. So you know what? Yes. And let just to be specific, um, I provided charcuterie for the event. Yes, exactly. So that's the salami roses that were took. Thank you. Thank you, Cider Girl, <laughs> for saving me from myself. And it, it was a nice event, but it was like the one criticism was like, Pour more wine. <laughs> yes. Two hours is a but long wine. time for five pours. Yeah. 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 They could uh, have poured a little a, more wine. But, you know. A critique I'll put into an email. Uh, you anyway, had a lot of knowledge, lovely, and that was good. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lovely time. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we were uh, we could walk to the next place. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, oh, we got rides of, there. Yeah. But some of our friends drove us. Yes. And the no, guy no. and Serzan were with us. Yeah. And I believe that this was to tap and seller, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Where right, yeah. there, there was this um, almost anthropological experience that I had because oh, there was sure. this, there was the sportsing that was occurring, and I was confused by the whole situation. But there was much cheering and joy amongst the locals in Fresno, and they invited <laughs> us into this glorious cultural experience. Can someone explain what was going on? Well, there's uh, a sport it's... called football didn't never yes. heard of it yeah and there was a small but very enthusiastic crowd interacting with 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 this the sport on the uh, projected screen 
Yes. Uh, uh, for those of you who follow the sport, it was a, for, a 49ers game that allowed them to make it to the next level of the playoffs. Very and much a 49ers was it, was it again, bar at the moment. For, 49ers and was it the was it the the cheesehead thing? What do they call themselves? The, the, the Packers, Packers, but we don't Packers. talk about them. They pack the. We cheese, don't yeah. talk about them on this beer cast. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. The, why do we not talk about the Green Bay Packers? Uh, they're they are unacceptable, and I'm going to leave it at that. Wow, I uh, I I'm 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 agnostic through sports, and I had no idea that uh, is this a Minnesota even, thing? Even the beer wondered. Is it a, is a yeah. Minnesota thing, and I was a, I was a Niners fan that evening, literally because they were against the Packers, and that was the that was the end of that for me. So Tap and Cellar is this awesome little place that's tucked away. Uh, amongst some sort of uh, industrial looking buildings and they always have a nice list of beer and they have some lovely wine there. Uh, did anyone have something great? I, it looked like you did. Uh, well, I had I, a uh, Kolsch that was wonderful and an excellent IPA and a great flatbread pizza. Uh, I had a cloud yeah, good, black, good. Uh, cloud black, which was uh, an Imperial stout from very near where I was born uh, from Alvarado street brewery. Mm. Uh, I, did, I think I've seen them before, but that was the first time I realized they were from Monterey, uh, which is very close to my birthplace. I had a Russian River Porter, nice. uh, and oh, yeah. I think those, those are the only ones I recorded that night. Oh, uh, yeah, and I had the Russian River uh, Belgian, uh, which is a real nice uh, beer which I've had before. That was, a, that was good. That was a cool place. I give him credit. And we also hung out with uh, an, our other friend, Jason, who is— Oh, yeah, uh, one of the two Jasons you've talked about a lot of uh, Graveview Brewing, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe uh, Beer Jesus. We said, yes. yeah, we said we need to give you no, a beer adventure name. He says, "Well, people call me Beer Jesus." <laughs> I thought we went with Brew Jesus. Brew or Jesus, beer, yes, that was no, it. Thank you. Or, or, or Beer Sia, no, or Bruce Sia, mm-hmm. Bruce, uh, Bruce, Bruce Sia. The Bruce Sia is, is, is his Christian name. Is his Christian yeah, I think, name. And I think that's the best segue to our next beer beer experience well we we do have we do have to mention though there was a duck situation that happened that evening well first off we got in an uber because we're responsible and cider girl needed her moment and our uber driver was everything i've ever wanted she was playing exactly she was playing all the jesus music we ever wanted and had a wig that needed a lot of work it needed uncared Or wig. What a, it a beautiful car, though. I liked her car. Gorgeous, gorgeous car, but maybe some combing would be great. And then we went to this Mad Duck location where there were lots of ducks, and I was yeah. both excited and scared. Um, we did go to Mad Duck co- Brewing, where uh, the captain and I both had the Dark Star. By, oh, Fremont that was really brewing. good. The Fremont, yeah, yeah, yep. And I enjoyed the IPA and the bartender, and then we went home. And we Probably did a few more things the next afternoon, but our next beer thing was going to. Back to the place you've been before, the where uh, Summer Fox Clovis, Summer Fox and yeah. Clovis, where uh, where Jason uh, brews a lot of Jason, both Jasons, but we only were hanging out with one, uh, where they brew their beer. They they have their yep. space there and they're brewing it, and uh, and man, that was that was. I had a lot of great experiences when I was in Fresno, but that was probably the highlight. Yeah, nice. well, he he gave us a ton of beers. We tried a really cool IPA that he'd been working on that had grated orange peel in it right off the bat. Yeah, um, that and was it, really and even t- and even told us it was still there were still things that were yeah. going to be added to it later. It was but raw. He let us try. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then he gave us this wonderful apple beer two ways. Like we had it fresh, right, right, literally out of the fermenters. But then he also gave it to us um, where it had been aged in Chardonnay barrels. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. Mm. Um, and I, lo- see- I love the whole notion about uh, with that, like the legalities of whether something can be called cider or whether it's beer. Yep. And and I think he said that was technically if it's less than 50 percent apples. Yeah. Was that yep. the- he yeah, was 50 percent. Cider, cider girl can speak to this more than I can. Yeah, it's a. Um, he calls it. It's called a graft, I believe. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, if it's, it has to be fifty-one percent grain, and the rest can be apple. And then with your light, your beer license, you can make it. Mm-hmm. If it's the other way around, it becomes a full cider, and then you actually need a wine and beer license to uh, create it. Uh, so it's a strange, old-fashioned rule um, that seems antiquated, but. Um, there's the so many fr- crazy fucked up rules about that, but, but I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. my question for you 
is yes. do you think this was close enough to cider to be acceptable for your palate? I I think it's very good. Um, okay. I've had I've had the opportunity to try it a couple different times. Uh, Jason and Jason allowed me uh, to try it when it was still in the bright before it was mm-hmm. fully finished, and it was still really good. And then they've done some where they've tried different uh, flavors on it, and that was also really good. Um, I I think if you were having cider because you're allergic to gluten or wheat, um, then you'd need to be warned. Um, but if you're ju- just drinking cider because you prefer the taste, I think you would really like it. Yeah. I, I was wildly impressed because it is that weird, that like really cool cross between those two things. And the Chardonnay barrel gave it this cool, oaky, like yes. woody character that kind of made it almost like fall. Like it was sort of the perfect sense of fall for me. And I was really surprised to see the fresh stuff as well as the oaked stuff, which was really cool. Uh, but then we also, we, we moved into Captain's Territory. We had two breakfast stouts. We had one that was a fresh traditional English breakfast stout as well as a oh, barrel yeah. English stout. So good. So mm-hmm. good. And then the other thing he did, and and I think Cider Girl can speak to this more, is he he gave us a pumpkin tea infused California common. Right. Where where he kind of I I didn't quite understand the process, but it seems like he sort of shoots at a high pressure the beer through tea that he purchases from a local store. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, they work with a local store that provides spices, teas, um, other flavor palettes. Uh, and uh, it almost reminds me of just how you would dunk a tea bag into, into your hot mm-hmm. water to get the yeah. flavor. But it's much more complicated than that. Um, and that's one of the ways that they, they infuse their, their beers with all the different flavors. Uh, recently, they did a sort of inspired by the Lord of the Rings series where they had nine different kinds of uh beer that they took from that one base beer and then they tried different teas different spices um and each one took on a completely different character it's really interesting brewing process yeah i i thought his stuff was so cool um and he was just i mean he showed us some of the barrels he was working with and really kind of showed off the space and i mean gosh we tried six of his brews that day it was just really quite incredible to get a chance to see what he's doing uh, and it was some of that was kind of high ABV. I, I definitely left that place feeling buzzed, and it wasn't just because I had tequila for breakfast. Um, <laughs> That's right. That's true. Captain and a margarita. Yeah. Uh, well, and then we headed out to Machinist, Machine Head. Yeah, Machine, Machine Head. Machine Head. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually marked down my beer. It was at, you know because I was not feeling it. Yes, you were. You were not living your best life. <laughs> no, it was not going well for me. Uh, but uh, I did. Cautionary tale. I didn't have much at Grayview, and then I had. I said, "Oh, well, I'll have one beer at Machine Head," and I had a sour, and it was just delightful. It was called, uh, it was called the Calamansi Dreams, hmm. and Calamansi is a type of fruit. It's a, a, a it's a, it had kumquat, mandarin orange, and lemon lime. Uh, Calamansi citrus. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, but it was a. It was just like it was very much like juice. So it really did settle in with me really nicely. That was exactly the right beer for mm-hmm. the, you know where I was in the wrong time, as it were. And I hope you all enjoyed um, Machine Head as well. I did. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had I had their Ferris Bueller's Day Off Hazy IPA, which I oh, certainly. Yeah. Certainly appreciate it as a classic of theirs. I also just dug the space. Like it's a little, it's a little out of the way, but we sat in this beautiful open area. And I think I remember mentioning to Ciderhead or to to Ciderhead, Ciderhead, Hawk and Cider Girl, this 10 percenter is giving me everything I ever needed. How I like got California. Right now, I just love the idea of like the way that like power couples have their like exactly in a fur or whatever that like just the, the, cider the, head. Yeah. With cider head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. But I, I remember sitting out there and just being like, I get it. Like I get California. I get yeah. why this is nice. Cause we were sitting out in January. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think I had like a fleece on or something, but it yeah. was, and we were having a beer outside. People were playing board games. There were some dogs around and it was just, and there weren't even heaters on. It was just nice. It was just yeah. lovely to be outside. Yeah. It was a, yesterday. It was, a nice it was seventy. You know what? You can stop now. It's okay. 
I couldn't believe it, yeah. Uh, but uh, then we headed over to Crow and Wolf, a local favorite. Oh, that was great, yeah. That the was great, yeah. Had a, a, uh, flight. Delightful flight of stouts. Uh, yeah, and I can't even... Uh, here's the funny thing is, like, I never record flights on Untapped, so I don't remember specific, yeah. but I don't think... There was not a bad one there. They were all just so fantastic. Yeah, Crow uh, and Wolf's a real nice spot. Yep. I enjoyed their West Coast their re- and their Red IPAs as well as their Fest beer. Um, and I remember also Excellent Dogs, which I know is not relevant to the conversation, but like, like dogs top, or you know, like 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 furry, like you can pet them on the head. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they were they were very, a uh, very uh, beer friendly place. Oh, oh yes. Uh, Huck is uh, showing a picture of me. And if you follow our Instagram, we might have put this on there of me like carrying uh the the flight if that's not on the instagram huck i i, I want you to put it on i have there. i have a lot of photos i haven't put up yet yeah i yeah. need to put up a whole photo of the of the uh a, a, a collage of all the things we did uh, yeah i don't think you can mention crow and wolf without mentioning the seltzer game there Oh yeah. Uh, you know, yes. Know this isn't a seltzer pro- podcast, but they uh, they make really creative uh, mm-hmm. and alcoholic. Uh, thank you very much, seltzers. So mm-hmm. yeah. if you're not in the mood for beer, you can go there. Um, and they're wild flavors. There, there's one that's like um, vanilla and boysenberry, and the, yeah, that's not quite what it is. And there's one that almost tastes like. Um, you know, uh, a swimming pool and, and Tropicana um, suntan lotion. And you th- you'd think that would be terrible, but it's so good. You know, they've got all sorts of crazy ones and each is, is good uh, if depending on what your mood is. Yes. The mood matters. Yeah, well, also, one... uh, Crow and Wolf, we, we, we redubbed Crown and Wolf, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. I can never say it right. <laughs> so Crown it. Or, or, yeah, Crown Wolf, Crown, Crown Wolf. I don't know why I can't say it right. Hashtag Crown, Crown Wolf. Wolf. We're going to Crown Wolf. Uh, yep. Yeah, it was great. Um, and then we had to bring uh, our dear, dear beer wonder to the airport. Mm-hmm. To and I had a long, goodbye. had a long journey through through the Phoenix. You know, and uh, made it back to the New Yorks. Props up to Beer Wonder for beer venging all the way up until he had to be thrown onto the airplane. I mean, that's yeah. last possible moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's very noble. It's noble. Now, I, I will say I did, when I was in the Phoenix airport, I had an opportunity to be revenge and I did not because I realized I had not eaten. And so I decided it was a good idea to, to take care of that first. I but, mean, um, but it, it, those two, the two aren't, aren't mutually exclusive. That's true. That is true. But, um, but you know, part of the plan had been to get in early enough that we could do some beer venging on the first night and then also to stay late enough that there could be some beer venging on the second night. But I hope you yeah. continued the important research and defense of beer that is the beer venging while I was gone. Well, we, we didn't uh, in the immediate rest of the day. Well, uh, you know. that was a little more. We, uh, you know, we, I understand. Uh, you, were, you were mourning we, my absence. I understand. We wound up I, having I dinner, and I had wine with dinner, and then we we started getting into the new season of True Detective, and but then like beyond right. that, there were another two full days of Huck and I and Cider Girl uh, going to to other places, and then I had like another five days in another city in California. And I'm starting to realize we're over an hour at this point, and I <laughs> don't know if I can cram it all into all of this. So uh, ordinarily, what we would do now is we would stop recording and then record another episode. But it's too late for us to do that right now for those of us on the East Coast who have to be somewhere in the morning. Uh, so I, I'm i proposing now that I think we need to do a part two sometime yeah. next week. How does that feel for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I think even, you're right. Even if Pier Wonder doesn't have a whole lot to contribute to that, I, 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 I think I'll that just might drink. Be- That's what I do. Oh, okay. We could also That's combine cool. it with talking about the, your your experience with the, uh, the other thing with the the uh, yeah, uh, uh, the the bourbon barrel event in the Bronx. E- e- everyone, welcome to our our our, uh, our our production meeting. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a production <laughs> meeting right now on the air. Yeah. Well, it was real fun. And I just like really because we, we want to tell you guys all about this, but we know you don't want to hear a two-hour episode because as soon as you see that on there, like that's too much. 
Uh, now here's the but, thing, but have, here's the, yeah. Captain. The people might want to hear a, a two hour episode, and if they want to hear a two hour episode, where should they tell us that they want to hear a two hour episode? I mean, the most traditional. Uh, I hate to call anything about email old school because it, it's only existed for the last, you know, only half my life, maybe. Uh, but the if you want to email us, you can do that at thebeervengers at gmail dot com. Uh, we're pretty good about responding to instant messages on our uh, on our on 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 the on the, the socials. Not so much about the formerly Twitter thing because we hate them. Uh, I mean, is that is that overstating that? If you're wondering, yeah. you're, you're gesturing. Yeah. We're on the yeah. gram. I mean, look, he just implanted something in someone's brain. I have questions, but we'll, we'll we're, move we're on. on the gram. We're on the the Facebooks, the TikToks. Uh, TikToks, the Spotify's. The... Yeah, I mean, if you're listening to this, you probably know where to find us. Uh, but uh, I'm so looking. Now, I I did not anticipate this being a two parter, but we there's just so much to talk about. I, I think it has to be. And uh, and Cider Girl, uh, can you come back for part two? I sure can. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna figure this out. Uh, we we might I mean we might actually have to re, re, we haven't done weekly episodes for a while but we might just have to do these two weeks back to back since you, you guys were so patient with us missing you know going three weeks without one we're gonna two oh, back to back yeah. it's gonna be great it's gonna be exciting uh, I won't have another uh, uh, souvenir from my California trip there but we'll have wonderful beers have, have I done that oh okay I wasn't sure so so beer wonder when you when you said should we mention our things we've done enough mentioning of that it is time for that now we plugged the socials I, f- I feel committed to that you know here's the thing come back anytime and huck play us out all right thanks everyone oh with a beer 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 avengers beer 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 avengers beer 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 avengers with a beer avengers yeah. Fresno. Fresno. Fresno.